Hey everybody, I'm super excited because today I have friend, former boss and colleague Joe Spector, who is the president and general director at the Arizona Opera, where I was lucky enough to sing two different times. Hey Joe, it's so great to see you again. Great to see you, Marco. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Now, I'm really excited to have you here because I know you're a super open-minded person and uh, and even more so, I think that, you know, you're around music literally 24-7, basically. So, I mean, besides, you know, doing the doing the books and <laughs> all the things that go into being a, a general oh, that's, director. That's music of its own kind, Marco. It's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. symphony, for sure, especially now. Especially now, yes. Mm. Uh, but so I have a bunch of stuff that I want to play for you. Do you have any experience with video games, really? So I played, I go back to like Atari. I had Atari growing up and I had a Commodore 64. Oh my God. I used to play. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I was so into that Commodore 64. I, I can oh. think of, it was, uh, what was it? The Law of the West. There was a Bruce Lee game. Um, you know, I, I can think of um, any number of video games I used to play to all hours in the morning. Uh, <laughs> and with, with my friends, some of my oldest uh, and dearest friends were still connected and uh, video games was part of the context for that. Uh, and now my kids, I've got two girls, uh, Sophie and Charlotte, who are uh, 15 and 12. Uh, oh. They've got Nintendo Switch. And so um, I'm continuing that journey through them, uh, <laughs> through uh, Zelda. And, you know, they got Tears of the Kingdom going on right oh. now. And Mario and Hoa and all sorts of things. So so it's it's kind of fun to see them uh, taking up that mantle. And uh, I, I, I love it for them. That's awesome. Well, there's a there's a lot of music uh, that has is is around between the Atari and Commodore and the Switch. So I think we'll we'll I'll, I'll assume that you have limited to no knowledge and just give you like a flash, you know, a flash course of what Fantastic. is going on in the music world in video I games. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. Well, you, before we uh, went live, you said you were down for whatever. So I think I'm going to start with the only thing they fear is you from uh, Doom. Do you do you okay. ever play Doom? I I've seen people play Doom. I I kind of know Doom, but I, I'm otherwise a neophyte. She woke up. There's a job. <laughs> there we go. 
this. We made us wait like two minutes on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was quite the introduction to video game music in the year 2023 <laughs> what do you what do you make of that uh that was fun that was fun i mean I, i'm a child of uh, 90s music and listen to a lot of rage against the machine and that kind of thing so there's a definitely a, like a spiritual connection there um you know and i, and I like mu- music that grooves too so like I, I was into it and i loved hearing like where it would take kind of the core and then start departing chromatically and all that kind of thing. So, so that was fun. I, I was worried about that character on the screen there. You know, I was thinking doom guy. <laughs> yeah. Doom guy. You know, I, first of all, I got a lot of questions cause I don't really know doom that well. And the dude, you know, like 
my first thought was, oh, I should use this music for like my ring walk music when I'm going to make pre curtain speeches at the opera, you know, like to get like, psyched up. Like, yeah, my psycho song. <laughs> but the more I listened to it, the more I was like, oh man, Doom Guy's like, he's got some, he's got some issues if this is like what's going on in his heart. And I was worried about him. Um, he's getting amped up, ready to go and kill all these demons. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, I kind of get it on one level. Um, um, but no, I, I loved. I, I, I mean, it, it, it's jamming and it's fun. And I love. I love when it got really out there and there was like a voice controlled instrument at one point. I was like, okay, this this is fun. You know. It's yeah. I, I appreciate. I'm not the biggest fan of like hard hardcore metal rock and stuff. I, I respect it, but but I think one of the reasons I like that piece so much is that it 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 is always keeping you guessing and there's no like structure to it, even though there very clearly is like, you know, it doesn't go A, B, A, A, B, C, A. It, it, it really kind of is doing its own thing. Like we noticed like in the first couple minutes waiting yeah. for that drop to happen. It actually yeah. just extends it for, you know, it's, it's so much fun to hear it yeah. that way. I kept, I kept having these like images in my head, like they're in the recording studio and they're recording this thing. And like, the drummer's hi hat fell over and the snare drum, and that's why they couldn't drop the beat until like like you're going scrambling, trying like, to like get set back up again. They're, like trying to figure out where where their next on ramp is. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I was I was I had this like very rich visualization about what was happening in the studio during all of it. You know, that actually brings up a really interesting uh, subject and and one that I would love to get your perspective on um, context. Now, when we go to the opera, like we can listen to plenty of opera music outside of context that so we can listen to the Tosca duet and be moved. And, and sometimes you don't even even know what you don't need to know what the words are in order to feel a certain way. Right. However, I think you and I both understand that when we add that layer of context, suddenly it's like, oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, and if it, you, you sort of have a more intensely uh, emotional uh, like feeling towards it. But, you know, something that's been really interesting for me is that I listen to a lot of music that I don't know the context for, and it still causes, in video games, I should say, uh, it still causes an emotional reaction. And um, I guess my question to you is, does context matter? Like, would you love to know where in the game that song plays? Or, or do you think that, like there are certain pieces that stand on their own perfectly fine, both in opera and in video games. You know, I guess I, I, this is also a question we can answer later on when you've heard more pieces, but I was sort of curious about you, what your thoughts on context. I, I, I'm the kind of person like, I, I like the idea of being with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the other guys getting dropped in the middle of the jungle to fight the predator and like not knowing exactly where you are at the beginning, you know? So <laughs> the, I, I, I personally like, the idea of not being familiar with the context and, you know, and, and letting the material kind of like lead the way. And then my mind will fill in the blanks. I think some people need more visual context or more story, mm -hmm. con like to feel like they can give themselves permission to enjoy it. But my personal view and the way I, the way I, I approach that question, but also the way I think about opera is, uh, you know, if we're doing our job right, you shouldn't need any of it in order to have an amazing experience and to get connected to the story very fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really interesting thing about context because I, I'm like you, like I listen to all of the studio Ghibli, Ghibli, Ghibli. I always forget. Ghibli, I, Ghibli. I, it's actually the way I say it usually. So I think that's right. <laughs> no, that, that music's amazing. I mean, amazing. I listened to all that before watching the movies. And then yeah. when I went back and watched the movies, am I out of focus? I'm out of focus. Um, every, when I went back and watched the movies, I was like, Oh my God, that's the one song I that's really the, liked that, from listening yeah. to it. Yeah, and now those now that um, that music is touring with like symphony orchestras now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, so, you want to talk about magical audio visual? I mean, those are those are operas, you know, in terms yeah. of just the emotional sweep. It's uh, whew, you know, spirited not, away, and well, we watch those all the time. They're so good. Ponyo. Ponyo. Oh, Ponyo. I love Ponyo. Yeah, Ponyo yeah. is so adorable. And I, I love like the journey that Ponyo goes on. Mm, that's a separate, that's a separate, uh, <laughs> separate video. We'll have to uh, re or circle back and try something uh, again. Sounds oh. good. Sounds good. So now I'm going to uh, rewind a little bit. Now this is from the Pixel remaster, but it's uh, actually the, the, uh, <clears throat> the song is called battle on big bridge. And it's pretty much been in, if I recall correctly, it's pretty much been in every, Hold on, I think I actually sent you the wrong link. Which one did I send you? No, I sent you the right one. Um, battle on Big Bridge uh, is a battle that occurs between the, the player characters 
and uh, Gilgamesh. And uh, it's a super famous piece. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly that it comes along in basically every subsequent Final Fantasy. It appeared first in Final Fantasy V. Um, these series recently just got a, a, a big little boost and upgrade. Uh, they're called the Pixel Remasters. And so this one we will have context and you can listen to the music in this remastered version of the song and also uh, watch what's happening on the screen. So you okay. this is great. Yeah, it's, this, is this is originally it was from like the 1990s. So yeah, that that's obviously that's a remastered, updated version of that song. But uh, okay. you know that that's that's uh, from however long ago, nineteen ninety something. Oh my gosh, that was funny. I, I mean, started out felt like I was listening to some rock, and then then it then it sounded like a Quentin Tarantino soundtrack, and then there was <laughs> Maynard Ferguson coming out of nowhere and the trumpet and. <laughs> And yeah, and then I, and then I was definitely by bar mitzvah for a period of time there. Uh, it was like there's like a real serious horror vibe that I was getting. Um, yeah, I know it, it's it's extremely bouncy. And actually, I'm kind of now that now that we're talking about this, I'm kind of wanting you to hear uh, the original, just so you can hear like the. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good. My yeah. kids play Undertale. Oh yeah, the, yeah. You know the you know the that sound quality. Here's the original. So you can tell like that, you know. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so pretty darn good even the old originals pretty good I mean, yeah, considering it came out in, uh, when did it come out? 1992? Yeah, that, that was the year I graduated from high school. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. 
That's it. That's it. Is it? Is it though? <laughs> but you're so still like, alive? <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> but what's crazy is that like, I was I was six in 1992. Yeah. No, I, me too. I just was really super. <laughs> you were smart just in and, band. You were in band. Yeah, I, was like Doogie, I was Doogie Hauser. I watched Doogie Hauser. And I, <laughs> yeah, I love Doogie Hauser. Learned from it. You know. Came, oh. I basically, you know tailored my whole career after that show yeah i think that that's totally fair uh but so it, it's interesting to to like hear like where we are and then if we uh, final fantasy 16 just came out and okay. uh which actually my my question to you is do you want to hear the evolution of classical music or do you want to hear uh an outright banger uh a banger? a banger man i, I right. live in the evolution of classical music let's 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 bang it out Okay. Well, this won't be this won't be like classical music, but okay, it will be it will be very enjoyable. I just have to find the right track. One sec. Sorry. Yes. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll send you this. Spoilers to anybody that hasn't finished Final Fantasy 16, as this will absolutely be a spoiler for you. Weather looks a lot like Phoenix right now. Of that i mean obviously with the visuals it's like incredible right it like fits that scene weirdly well no yeah, it's amazing to look at the previous video and think this is even part of the same franchise yeah. uh i i'll tell you i got stuck once i decided that the reason this dude was running so fast was so he could get to a bottle of moisturizer at the top i kind of i I was just thinking, God, this guy needs some sunscreen or some moisturizer. And it's, you know, it's 115 in Phoenix today. I'm like, I feel you, man. I feel you, brother. You were like, he's like made of fire. All, all I can see, like, I get it. I, I was like rooting for him because I'm like, I just know this. Like, 
Luberderm or something up there <laughs> that's gonna really help this guy out. And like that and that made sense with the intensity of the music for me. Yeah. Well listen, whatever the context that you need, <laughs> right? That's the thing. Music has variables. We don't need to be we don't need to be ex- you don't need to know that he's fighting like you know his his nemesis and all this other stuff. Like as long as Luberderm is his savior. That's the, the dry, dry skin dry. is his nemesis, you know? <laughs> you gotta take care of your skin. It's it's the largest organ in your uh, body, you know? Yeah, so. I, I respect that. Well, there you go, everybody. <laughs> this is a product placement for you there, Marco. I don't know if that's one of your streams right now, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll save the other piece if we have time for later because we're, we've are we done too much Final Fantasy. We need to move okay. into other things. That was um, cool. Yeah, oh yeah. Isn't it cool? Uh, yeah. just, just like seeing the evolution of like where it came from to where it is today, you know, it's it's absolutely insane. Crazy, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, We've done a lot of, we've done a lot of like intense stuff. So I want to pick something that's a little bit more chill. Okay. Um, have you heard of, uh, actually, so this piece, okay. So this piece is from Bayonetta 3. Uh, it's called Fertile Rondo. Uh, people wanted me to react to this, but I haven't, I haven't actually seen it or played it. So we're going to listen to this together. We're going to do this together. Yeah, I don't know. That feels kind of magical. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, I'm going to find a way to tie Luberderm into this one too. This is where you find out. You you should, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm pretty sure that there's opera in this, so I guess we'll find out. Okay. Hear that harpsichord? That's funny. <laughs> it's like a pop song. Reminds me of uh, Fifth Element. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like popping and locking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! This is so Fifth Element. This is uh, this is the this is the filament development right now. Development. Even that little auto tune bit. That's exactly. This is crazy. <laughs> up there that's crazy so this is how they use opera in video games sometimes i i don't mind i mean the way it was set up is so much like the diva Pablo laguna scene in in the fifth element that like yeah, i couldn't yeah, escape yeah. that i mean like even the use of the um little auto tune section in there when i was popping and locking don't don't hate the player man hate the game but um man, was like, I, and i love i love the fifth element um mm-hmm. So, so I, I was good with that. I have this idea for any, any of one of your viewers can rip this off. But it's all good for me. <laughs> this idea of a, uh, of an opera based on the life of the diva Pava Laguna. And like, <laughs> she's this famous, she plays this famous Lucia de Lamarbor, but you, but the whole opera, like you see her on stage and it's all glamorous or whatever. But like when she goes back to her quarters on the ship, it's like, she's got a thing of Cheetos and she's like <laughs> screaming suits. <laughs> and like, isn't it? Isn't that kind of like what the life is like? It is exactly what the life is like. <laughs> you know how many times that I was in Arizona, or really any gig, I remember when I was in France, let's say, I would come home and, you know, be like eight hours of rehearsal, only speaking French or not speaking at all because no one spoke English. And I was just kind of like, okay. I like had the one colleague that spoke Italian that I clung to. And then right. I would come home and I would just like lay in bed because there was no like couch. And I would just play video games like, 
Yeah. What, what is this life? In Arizona, no, at least, I had great. I had great. I mean, Arizona's got great food. Phoenix has got great food. So there was never like, I never felt like I was like cloistered. I could always yeah. do stuff in Phoenix. Yeah. My, my first apprenticeship was at Sarasota Opera. And the two things that all of us used to love doing down there was um, we played Mario Kart, whatever <laughs> version of Mario Kart existed back then and watched American Idol. Like those were the things you did with our free time, you know? I'll tell you the one challenging thing for me listening to music like that is that like up to this point, I'm like I'm like in this imagination zone of the guy who really needs moisturizer and like yeah. jamming out on the guitar and the guy dropping his cymbals and stuff like that. And I'm totally untethered just in Joe land on a Friday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. And then then this happens. And then there's the 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 Joe who's listened to like thousands of auditions. Part of his brain <laughs> is thinking like, you know, I would have loved it if the onset of that <laughs> note was like this. Yeah. And you know, it's I really wish the string was vibrating when she you know took this note. And you know, and, and so I, I got brought brought back there. So thanks for that, Marco. Reminding Sorry. me, that but <laughs> <laughs> but the question actually, you know, that's a good point though because the question is, you know. Can we, as people that are very well versed in the opera world, and you, you much more than me at this stage in the game, like, you know, would you want to hear things that relate to classical music, or would you want to like be rooted in, you know, in something completely different? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's like it's like like I could play you right now. I could play you Lord of a Dead Empire, which has a baritone, and you're a baritone. Like, you're immediately probably going to go into technical brain if I play it. So it's yeah. like. Would it be, be? It would probably be better to listen to things that are not opera based. Uh, right? Well, I, it just depends on you know, like like everything, like food and and drink and physical activity. What do you? Where, where is your? Where's your rhythm? Where's your energy in that moment? And I and I love opera and I love opera singers and you know part of my thing is like having been a singer, I'm rooting for singers. So yeah, of course. So I I don't approach you know, I like when I'm hearing something like that fertile rondo that I, you know, I hadn't heard before. I, I do, I do think about, you know, what's going on with that singer, but like, it's from the perspective of, I, I would, I would like to, you know, I would love to nurture it in that particular way. And it, and it taps into that thing. Um, yeah. I will say that I don't, uh, sometimes I seek opera listening outside of work, but a lot of times I don't because I, there is so much opera. Nonstop. It, yeah. Um, I do love seeing, I like I like seeing how um, areas of pop culture engage with opera. Like, what is organic? What is that perspective? And, you know, I'm, I'm only kind of joking about the, the opera based on the diva Pava Laguna. Like, I would do an entire Lucia set in that, you know, sure. kind of video, video driven space reality. Like, I think that would be very interesting. Um, and and seeing like not the caricature side, because I think you know, you get, you get that too. Um, you get that a lot when, when, when they're pop culture references to opera, but I like, I like to see it when there's like an earnest kind of like o homage sort of approach here in this, this track. I think they were, they were trying to like, say, I want to pull this cool opera vibe into this tune. And, and that was what it was used like an instrument that way. And I, yeah. I, well, actually you reminded me of something here. I'll, I'll keep you on this like avant-garde, path here you have to let me hear the baritone one now i'm sorry right, like, yeah no i will you gotta know now huh you did some good curiosity marketing on that yeah
Yeah, definitely put me into baritone, baritone yeah. math mode. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, mm, nope, that's a little open throat, a little too white. Co- yeah. Voce Bianca. Apoja, there. Apoja. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's funny because, so, I mean, people, it's a beautiful track. It, it like fits the mood really well. But it's funny that I also listened to this and I was immediately like, okay, it was one of the first videos I filmed. I'm over here like talking technique, like how it's done, where the placement yeah. is, you know, the open, maybe the F sharp, a little too open, could have closed, you know, and it's all of a sudden yeah. it's like, but then it, it's interesting to me. Um, I'll play this for you. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, from a game called Punishing Grey Raven. The character is actually a, um, an artist, a singer, a director. I can't remember, Selena. Um, and she actually, her weapon is a, a flute, called uh, Zarastro. It's hilarious. And, uh, oh, but really? it's actually, her character is actually incredibly uh, sad and she's like tortured and all this stuff. But this is Sie in sich beide, which is a popular Heinrich Heine poem. Um, but I think you'll, this will be worth the like schlog through this one. And I think you'll appreciate it very much. Okay, let's schlog through. It starts very typically. Mm -hmm. shift now okay Danny Boy drums back again. <laughs> Anvils, nice. 
Is River Dance? <laughs> yeah. The shift. There right. you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delio. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Isn't that nuts? <laughs> yeah, I love how it moved from like this very um, kind of tribal, folky kind of sound, you know, this Celtic, you know, um, acoustic kind of world and into this, you know, into that modern world with all electric, uh, electronic uh, instruments. And, and then I was listening to the sampling in there, too. I, I would say the one thing that's the through line is, you know, just a total embrace of a groove you know and we don't yeah. we don't often do that in classical music in 2023 you know giving people permission to like you're going to hear this 70 times in a row <laughs> and we're just going to like tweak this one thing you know and yeah. and i love it like when they pop in like this thing you expect to be major and it's minor or vice versa like and and just playing with those little elements and it's that thing that gives you a little dopamine hit because you, you, even if you don't have musical language to describe the, the theory around something that they're playing with, uh, you 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 hear that it's different, and it and it like oh, and now I got to pay attention again. Yeah. Mm. 
that's cool. Well, and I also especially like that piece because it it really to me is like a, an evolution of classical music in the sense that we're allowing um, play, which is so hard to do when and you know this as well as I do that like you know when you're getting in there and you're trying to perform at your best level, you're inevitably doing things that are you know you, you try it's a performance practice, and so what's beautiful about this is that you can kind of this deviates from what we know as like the standard approach to art song. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I like the art song bit, though. I mean, that if you told me that was like, uh, you know, Schumann, uh, you know, after a couple brandies, I'd be like, OK, yeah, like, <laughs> that's what they were aiming for. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's keep her moving here. Drunk I know we're Schumann. on. We could, do a, we could do a drunk Schumann tribute tri- 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 <laughs> Just include crazy stuff in there. Yeah. All right. I think I think we'll go. <clears throat> okay, do you want to go classical or do you want to go like upbeat jazz? Upbeat jazz. Let's see okay. upbeat jazz, yeah. Okay. All right. This is from uh, Persona 5. Uh, okay. It's called Last Surprise. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a, that's such a banger in my opinion. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. What's that game about? Persona? Oh God, um, um, you know, it's funny. I played 115 hours of it, and I can't. Even, uh, uh, they're kids in high school. They, it's like a social sim, but then also, uh, it plays like the old school Final Fantasies, and it has this active time battle where you are, uh, you play the Phantom Thieves, and you're trying to stop. Uh, you go into people's subconsciousnesses and stop bad things from happening uh, like before, you know, you have to defeat the like evil part of their subconscious in order to destroy it and save the world. And yeah, yeah, I can relate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, no, I would never in, in a million years. That is not the theme that, game that I would have come <laughs> yeah. up with. Like, I'm like, I'm like, is this a video game about like walking through you know, Times Square in 1973, listening to like the Starsky and Hutch soundtrack. You know, like, <laughs> slap at the bass, slap at the bass. Not quite, no, <laughs> not, not quite. Um, all right, we'll keep her going here. You probably yeah. know Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, I, yeah, I think my kids have this one. Okay, well, we'll jam out to this for a couple. Yeah, minutes. absolutely, let's jam. Out. <clears throat>
Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. That's fun. Yeah. in. I don't in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's not to like? <laughs> what's not to like? I keep finding myself trying to figure out in which of these tracks um, the the instruments are, are digital versus real. Yeah. And we do so much, you know, compression on, uh, you know, it, it's like the aesthetic now is to have stuff feel really processed. So even if it's, even if it's real acoustic or whatever. It's hard to know because you know, the compression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the chorus there sounded like a sample, but, you know, yeah. someone's voice, we got sampled, you know, someone somewhere. Do you, do you think, uh, do you think like themes like that could exist? Maybe not that theme, but do you feel like, mm, actually, hold on. Let me hold this question really quick. I want to play this and then I want to ask you this question. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Cause this is at this point, I, I think I've played this for the last three people that have been here, but honestly, I never get tired of it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I would love it if this was like you singing Recondita Harmonia. <laughs> just, just, I just never get tired of this. You know, it's I just, never get this. Is, oh, oh you know. wow, that happens to be me. Oh, <laughs> I get that little thing. Once a tenor, always a tenor. What can yeah. I say, Joe? <laughs> Little turn there. Oh yeah. Oh, real people singing. Sopranos. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can hear these I can hear these Sopranos talking about this number of <laughs> tanks in the studio. Just wait. Just wait. It gets better. Alright. 
<laughs> oh. Look at all these composers. Yeah. Jeez. I want to play all of these for you, but I want to get as much as we can done in the next couple minutes. So, yeah. uh, isn't that crazy? Yeah, I liked hearing like real singers, and <laughs> I think they were, I think they might have been most mostly or at least some real instruments in there. You're like, yeah, you could hear intonation issues and things like that, which I'm not judging. It's just like it made it feel like it was a, more like a real performance, which I liked. But that was a fairly merciless. Uh, uh, Tessitura in there for the tenors and the sopranos. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, Tessitura uh, is where where the uh, voice sits. Uh, it's true, and, and what I really it's what's amazing about this piece is just how violent it is. You know, it's it's yeah. a little like aurally violent. I would say like about two minutes into it, though, I was thinking this is about a race of people that desperately need to get to CVS for some moisturizer. <laughs> And then, but like in this version, it was cold weather, and they were like on a sleigh, like on a sleigh. They're like, these, let's go! Like these, like these hybrid <laughs> wolf dog things, like just driving through, and there's like oh. fire coming out of their eyes and stuff. And like, ah, oh, god, <laughs> damn it, my skin is so dry. Well, it just goes to show that context <laughs> is king. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Luberdur. <laughs> Oh God! What do I what do I do? We've got like time for like two more. So now now I'm now I'm stressed. Now I need to figure out. <laughs> well, while, while I figure Let out what to play this. for you, Joe, why yeah. don't you tell everybody about who you are, what you do, and and all that good stuff? Uh, well, you know, I I think I'd rather hear what you think I do. That would be more exciting. <laughs> I, know, I know what I do. What do people well, think a general this, director of an opera company does? So I think okay, I'm gonna make this like thirty seconds. Uh, I think that. Uh, a general manager of an opera uh, works works on the budget, works on making sure that the program is good, hires uh, good singers, uh, uh, does donor events because we live in the United oh, States. Let me write this down. <laughs> <laughs> these, these sound so good. These sound so good. Oh. Actually, what I do is I play <laughs> Wordle. <laughs> Uh, you, you do pre-show lectures or the opening, opening night speech. You don't do pre-show okay. lectures. You do opening night speeches. You, uh, y- you tell other people what to do. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Right. That's good. That's good. I, that one, I definitely have to write down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's interesting because I, I mean, before I was actually a general director, I didn't know what a general <laughs> director. I, I mean that you, yeah. you remember the show, um, uh, what was it called? Greatest American Hero? Yes. My first year, my first two years of being a general director were a lot like that episode. Like you get the super <laughs> suit, but there's no instruction book, you know? <laughs> and and like and like underneath the super suit, you're still just a you know, William Cat with like a you know, <laughs> you know, the curly, yeah. curly. You're just like, what do I okay? What am I yeah, no, no one no one tells you. My my first day working at the Metropolitan Opera as a fundraising director. Comparatively speaking, my desk was completely empty. I had this embarrassingly large mahogany desk looking out over uh, over at Lincoln Center Theater, fourth floor of the Met. Beautiful, uh-huh. beautiful. <laughs> desk is desk is like immaculate, ready for me. The drawer is completely empty. No paperwork, no nothing. Only 
only thing in the desk was a half empty bottle of doers <laughs> in the center drawer. <laughs> that's what that that's kind of where you start, you know, it, it, if you haven't heard of it, because the, who teaches a class on how to be a general director? Maybe nobody maybe. does. Nobody yeah. Does. Yeah. No, all those <laughs> things sound good. Um, okay. But but it, it's the ratio of stuff that's probably more interesting the than the list. <laughs> yeah. you know? The percentages. Yeah, the percentages are pretty I always, If I ever came back to the opera world, I would definitely want to be an artistic director. I would like to help hire the singers, and I would like to help pick the operas. That's that's about, I really mean this, that's about 5% of the job. No, I, no, I, won't, I won't be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's wonderful i mean it's when you see those things come to life yeah it's of course rewarding out of any proportion um but it's but certainly in relationship to the amount of time we spend you know casting and um you know thinking about repertoire and things there's 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 so much more to do it and it mostly has to do with building relationships with people which right. is what you're doing here you know, because that human connection is what people are really looking for. And the music brings people together. The opera yeah. brings people together. Um, but, you know, there's so there's so many pieces that can do that. You know, there's so many pieces that can make that connection. Um, it, it's it, it's hard, too, because there's just so much there's so much good music, you know, and there's so much there's so much happening. It, it's a, it's a really interesting thing being a part of the video game sort of circuit now. I mean, I've always been like this since I was seven. I've been playing games, but but to be a part of like the cog of creating things around things. Um, I, I, I sometimes get concerned because I don't want to accidentally become a video game music pundit. That's like not what I want. Like I'm an artist. Sure. I mean, right. yeah. uh, but, but I, I, I hear you like, you know, but, but if, 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 if we create a space where people can gather virtually or at Arizona opera and, in, in Phoenix, you know, then that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Because we're inviting people into our homes. You know what I mean? No, no, the art is what brings people together, but it's being together that makes it special, whether it's virtually or in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I live for. And, and there isn't anything like I'm, I'm, I'm all for digital content. Um, but there's nothing that's exactly the same as being in the same physical space as a group of people. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's just something that happens energetically when you're sitting in, in a group of people and you're all experiencing the same that sonic vibration experience, the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like this emotional content, the risk of, and there's, and there's a physical risk like there is with any kind of acrobatics that comes with listening to a singer do these impossible feats. And, mm -hmm. and you, when you're, when you're near a group of people that are all, you know, like breathing, that we start breathing in sync and, you know, and, and there's this, there's a shared energy that's different than anything you can create just at home. That that's what I live for more than anything. Yeah. Um, I was also thinking, you know, here are examples of video games that are infusing their music with operatic and classical sounds. You know, what would it look like if we went the other direction you know, if you infused a, an opera with with video game, you know what? If you just you, a lot of the ingredients are the same, but like, mm -hmm. you know, I was like thinking, what if there's like this, you know, opera piece or opera video game called like Il Bacio di Tosca or something like that? And I'm, I'm stuck on Tosca because that's the last show we did together, um, I guess. Um, yeah. And I also love Tosca, but love Tosca. you know, what would that what would that be like? I can't like I mean like. Unfortunately, I have like Tosca go. It's like a first player shooter where like where she's got like a minigun running through Scarpia's, you know, Scarpia's, uh, um, Scarpy, you know, um, but but seriously, like, you know, could you take it from the other direction and take an opera that exists and take the core of an idea, you know, like Castle Wolfenstein or something like that? Yeah, then, yeah. But take it from the opera storyline perspective and just like fit that into a video game structure that would be familiar and retain uh, obviously like operatic elements for the music I'd, I'd be really i'd be really interested to see where you'd go with that you know maybe well, it would, maybe it would be you know what you could do you could do it with something like um probably not toasty songs but i was thinking like maybe because <laughs> we listen to that german thing um uh you know like uh, dich or something like that where yeah. each song represents like a stage in the game Oh my god! Know, be, you know, you know what I mean. There's plenty and, of avant-garde indie games like this. It could yeah, be made. Yeah, but let's get it. Let's get it done. I, I'm actually super keen on this. I like this a lot. The Kiss, and it's just like a to, it's like Tosca. It's a point-and-click adventure game where you play through the opera, but but with animation and visuals and maybe voiceover or something. Yeah, yeah. 
And then, she, we have, and then like, occasionally she has to stop off at the pharmacy for some moisturizer. <laughs> yeah, we got to have the moisturizer. Rome is very hot this time of year. <laughs> And a nebulizer because of her oh allergies. My are acting God, up. <laughs> I'm gonna let you pick the last song before I okay, let you sure. go, and then I have one piercing question for you after this oh is all okay. said and done. All uh, right. I don't know if you're gonna remember any of these titles, but I'm just gonna wing it. Sleeping in the cold below. Invincible. Nay, the honor is all ours. Faceless soldier. I'm giving you too many options now, but I know it's no, good. it's okay. I've already okay. picked which one I want to listen to. Oh, all right. Go ahead. I, I want to listen to it. I'm choosing a piece, right? That what, yeah. what I'm doing. I want uh, Invincible. I'm curious about Invincible. All right. This is from World of Warcraft. Surely you've heard of World of Warcraft. Okay. Yeah, I've certainly heard of the game. Never played the game. Okay. This is uh, this is a little bit of the story of the Lich King and how okay. he becomes a Lich King. Inv- Invincible is his horse. Okay. So he controls the all the moisturizer. He, he, I think in this crazy. case he does. Yes. In this case he most certainly <laughs> does. Then there's a uh, there's a follow up song called Arthas, my son, which is the the song about Arthas. So Invincible is his steed, and they're yeah. No, I was reading the description. Uh, yeah. Amazing. I, stuff. I never I never heard the word necromantically before, so I appreciate <laughs> having learned that while we were <laughs> while we were listening just now. You know, it's beautiful uh, stuff. I mean, <laughs> is there is there a song that you've listened to in the last little bit here that like really has stuck out to you? You know, I, I really love all of it. I mean, I, I I think what I've enjoyed the most about it is kind of, you know, thinking about how all of this music connects through people through video games. And video game is this medium where all of these kinds of sounds are completely normal. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. Because when you're not playing video games and you're like listening to the radio or, or streaming Spotify or whatever, this isn't necessarily what people think of as music. But and and if, if I said, you know, we're going to listen to some really jamming uh, Ukrainian sounding chorus work today, like you wouldn't do it. But but in the context of a video game, you'd be like, oh, man, this is bad. And and I um, and I kind of love that. And I it makes me think of, it does make me think about with opera. How could we describe it in a way that would be exciting to people? Because if you if you if you describe just what it is on a factual basis, it's hard to understand why it's going to get you so unbelievably fired up. But then, you know, you add this, you know, the rich um, action and the the visual reality of a video game. And of course, this is like the music that's it's got to be it's got to be big like this, whether it's on more on the rock side or the electronic yeah. or, or classical. And um, yeah, I, I uh, it's really got my my uh, gear spinning. So I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. I've, I've, I've enjoyed all of it. Good. That's good. Yeah, I often wonder about how I can like figure out how to integrate this music into a concert that has Beethoven or Mendelssohn or Sh- Clara Schumann or somebody, you know, and, and then throw some Arthas, my son, or some of the other pieces that we listen to that are completely legitimate classical works that, you yeah. know, could really expand and no one would be worse for the wear. No one would know. Right. <laughs> if you don't right. tell them, they're like, oh, this is a new composer. <laughs> right. Or, you know? or, you know, it'd be interesting also is to take some of the, the visuals from one of these games and then layer it over an existing, you know, put it over Prokofiev, War and Peace or something like that and see <laughs> see if it works just as well. And, you know, I'm serious. Yeah. Give yeah. it a shot. I mean, mm. it, 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 it's, um, I think they'd be almost interchangeable, you know? And uh, how cool is that to think that oh, actually millions of people would listen to the music if you just inserted a little, yeah. little Prokofiev here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget your moisturizer. Don't forget your moisturizer. (laughs) Well, Joe, I really appreciate you coming on. I know you probably have some meeting or you just want to go home, which I don't blame you. So um, I I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Uh, I know it's day to day is is busy. So thanks a ton. It really means a lot. No, it was great, Mark. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. And everybody, of course, feel free to like, subscribe. And if you want Joe back, let us know in the comments and maybe we'll get him back for a part two. So thanks a ton, everybody. And we'll see everybody later. Bye.